title of the message is this morning, A Healthy-Hearted Holiday. A Healthy-Hearted Holiday. And we're going to be reading from Luke chapter 17, 11 through 19. And we had such a delightful time on Wednesday, powerful time at the Bible study. I thought, you know what, we need to carry this over for Sunday about the ten lepers and how, you know, they, one, received the total healing. And we just want to look at that. So Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19 and I'm reading from the New King James Bible uh, version. Um, now it happened as we went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that he, they went and they were cleansed. And one of them, when he uh, saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. <laughs> glory. So Lord, we come before you as we're coming into this holiday season, Lord, beautiful American tradition, Thanksgiving, and coming to the, the Advent, Lord, of Christ, and Lord, you're coming, and Lord, we just want to get a hundredfold out of this, this season, Lord, pressing in and getting new things, fresh things from you, Lord, the bread of life, and we pray, Lord, that we can learn from uh, why did this one man get his full healing? And the others got a partial healing. But, Lord, we want to learn from it. We want to gather, Lord God, insight and wisdom to live a victorious life in you, a fulfilled life in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I got 50 uh, blessings. You know, it's Thanksgiving. We're coming up to Thanksgiving and, and I've got 50 here to read. So it's going to be a long list, but they're all things that you also have, we all have in common here in America, in America at this time. Um, here's some things we can thank God for. I can count on the roads to be passable and safe. They might have a, a little, you know, bump here and there, but they're passable and safe. My children have access to a good education and to higher education of their choice. I still can go to church. I'm free to go to church. Uh, I can go to the mall and see Latinos, Asians, Indians, Middle Easterners, uh, Africans, Americans, and whites all shopping peacefully together without incident. Amen. And I can grow my own vegetables and, and fruit in my garden. Hey, yeah, even if you have a little pot, you can grow some, right? Everybody can. I can still share the gospel free, freely wherever I go. Amen. And I still feel safe when I'm walking or biking and walking in my neighborhood. So there's safety there with discernment. My grocery store shelves abound with food of all kinds and varieties in America. If I can't find what I want at my grocery store, I can travel a short distance to a farmer's market and an Asian market or a specialty food store to find what I'm looking for. Our judicial system is not completely and utterly corrupt and full of bribery like many other countries. I can go to the beach or to the mountains or to the city for a getaway. This is all of us. Right? We're, we're blessed. Turn to your neighbor and tell him what we're saying is you're blessed. You're blessed. <laughs> you're blessed. All right. I, I can uh, blog anything I want. I have a variety of specialists that I can go to meet almost any medical need I have. 
I can afford a reliable vehicle to take me where I need to go. Of course, you got to save up for it, but in America, you can make it happen. You can, amen. Um, just save your money. And uh, the general public still obeys general traffic laws. It's getting a little crazier, isn't it? A few less are using their blinkers these days, but you know well, that's another subject. Uh, we can still buy, sell, distribute Bibles and other Christian books. We're comp See, this is just, we're blessed. We can not only count on getting a paycheck if, if we have worked, but we can also count on the bank being able to cash it. Amen. At this point, they're, they're all working. We don't have trash on the sides of our roads. We don't have people living in city dumps trying to make a living from people's trash that you can't you can't take anything from a dump here if I take a load to the dump you can't even pick up a piece of wood no 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 you can't it's it's all privately dumped <laughs> in America I mean we got to kind of laugh at that all right so we we have heat in the winter AC in the summer we can uh, freely travel throughout 50 states without fear of interrogation and danger uh, we can have good dental care if we need it and go to an eye doctor and we can afford glasses at Walmart. Huh? That's right. It, it, they're good glasses. So most of our policemen are still good men and women with a heartfelt desire to serve the public. We have a wealth of tests and tools available to diagnose our illnesses and keep us healthy. Uh, turn your name and tell them, do you see that you're blessed? Do you see that you're blessed? Okay. Um, I can sit on my porch and enjoy the sunset without fear of attack. I can communicate with someone I love across the world without charge because if Internet access has become available almost anywhere, even in many public places, through Facebook, I can talk to all of our disciples in Europe, and it doesn't cost anything. Nada. Right? That's a blessing. Amen. And insist, um, instead of uh, wild foraging dogs that are so rampant in many countries, we keep dogs as faithful companions and protectors. Isn't that neat? And uh, if they've got a problem, they get locked up, those dogs do. There is still an outpouring of love and generosity when someone is in need in this country, no matter what color, race, sex. Americans have a wonderful sense of empathy and generosity. It is truly a beautiful thing, right? When there's a disaster, guess who's there? 90% comes from America because of generous Christians usually and people that care, you know, about things that are happening. Even in nations that are our enemies, all of a sudden an enemy nation is an earthquake and guess who's there? <laughs> it's America, with the doctors or Israel. Israel comes too. They're very, very compassionate. We have faithful men and, and women in our country who are still dedicated to teaching the truths of the Bible. The sermons and lessons of these men and women are available freely uh, through podcasts and internet stations so we can blanket the earth with the gospel. Amen. We do here at Harvest Time and every other Bible-believing, you know, group. Amen. We can publish salvation. What we're saying here is that we're very blessed. Are we getting tired of our blessings here? And let, let's go on. There is still possibility to be successful in this country if you're willing to work hard. The American dream is still a familiar concept to most of us. It's available to all of course, there's more challenges in the future, but as we sit here together, the American dream is still alive, but um, we, we understand that we're living in critical times. I still find wonderful Christian music to listen to online. I got, you've got your podcasts. I can go to Pandora. I can listen to any Christian group I want. I mean, we got it there. I have a multitude of wholesome entertainment available uh, for my family. We like Pure Flex. We, you, know, there, you can find good movies and things to watch that edify and build you up and doesn't, and doesn't tear you down. See, it's all available to us. And uh, you want to go on? Amen. Let's go on here. We're so blessed. 
I have a bunch of activities that we can choose from for our family. In fact, I'm forced to choose only the best ones, right? You can go boating, you can shoot your gun, you can, you can go hiking, you can, we can go on and on. You choose, right? See, that's why we talked about last week that when John says we're a kingdom of, we're a kingdom of, of kings and priests, that's what it was translated as. So as we're free in Christ, these are, these are freedoms that we have that, that in times past only kings had, only nobility had it, but every common person in America can enjoy these things if they choose. If you choose to lose weight or rid yourself of any other unhealthy habit, we can find programs and websites to help us and get counsels that are free. It's all online. I can trust that when I cross a bridge, that it will hold the weight of my car. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because there's, there's, uh, there's laws that, that say it has to be done right. I can trust that when I, um, I don't have to worry about wild animals mauling me. I have fresh drinkable water pouring from my faucet wherever it is. Isn't that beautiful? Just... You know, one time in El Cajon, they were having some problem with the electrolysis, and all of a sudden the water was tasting bad. We always had really good water. And I'm like, I felt bad, but I called up the water district, and I said, hey, you know, I, not to complain, it's always been good, but it's really bad. And they said it's because our electris, electri, electrolysis system is down. I said, wow, thank you. So I'm sorry I have to call, but it's always good all the time, you know. So we're just, we're blessed. And then um, I look out my back window and see beautiful green grass and colorful plants. I have electricity available 24 hours a day. I can choose to eat organic or not organic. It's my choice. I can get in our car or plane or train or a bus and go almost anywhere in this world if we really want to. Our church can hold Bible studies, picnics, festivals without fear of government censure or intervention. I have uh, an ample amount of leisure time to spend as I choose. We have a yard, plenty of room. We can have picnics, activities. We have affordable, even downright cheap clothing available to us. This is not the case in many countries. You can go to Ross and get designer clothes for cheap. Amen. We're blessed. Turn to your neighbor tell him, you're so blessed. You're blessed. Shalom. <laughs> Gasoline is far less inexpensive here than it is almost any in any other country. Ask a European if you don't believe me. So even though we've got high gas prices, higher than we've ever had, it's still cheaper compared to what they pay for it in Holland and in Europe. Even the lowest income person in this country has more than the average poor person in other countries. We have vast uh, sections of forest and natural resources that have been protected from greedy men. Our kids can play and be involved in almost any sport that is known to mankind. If there is a will, there is a way. And some of these sports are a little bit strange to us, but if there's a will, they find a way and they do that sport, you know. Uh, like cricket, you know, cricket is like, that's weird to me, but there's a whole group of cricket players, you know, here, <laughs> here in San Diego. And uh, we can still enjoy a Thanksgiving celebration with our families. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. All right, so what we have to look out for in this holiday season is it's called Holiday Heart Syndrome. OK, and it's a uh, there's an electro uh, cardiologist and uh, and he reports this. So as we uh, as we eat at Thanksgiving, if we eat too much and stuff up too much in Holland, you call turkey, you call it cocoon and uh, it's turkey or in stuffing and it's delicious and it's good. But this is what happens to many people. It, it actually throws your heart rhythm off. And, uh, and your, your heart has to pump faster and it's less ineffective. So that's why you get a little bit sleepy with uh, overeating. It's uh, even the, the st you get the stuff in, the stuff. We got to laugh. We gotta... All right, so I'm no cardiologist, but uh, we have to warn you against another danger as a preacher is it's the ungrateful heart syndrome, the ungrateful heart syndrome. 
And it's, it's very real here in America and in, in the West because we've had so much that we, we've, we've lost perspective and we've lost the ability to praise God and to thank him for all the abundance that God has blessed us with. And I know here, we're here in church, we're praising God. But we do have to, you know, as a whole, we know that many are not as happy or as grateful as they should be. And so we have to really uh, pass this test. And as we come into Thanksgiving, you know, let's find things to be thankful for. As we come into Christmas, let's find things to be thankful for. We're always tested, you know, with gatherings and family and different things that, that we really keep the praise of the Lord and that we keep Jesus at the forefront and we stay joyful and, and praising God in the good times and in the hard times and, and when the finances are flowing and when, when the tap dries up, then we have to press into God and find, you know, find how he's going to provide and thank him, even thank him that, that we can at times tighten our belt and uh, and and learn how to sacrifice and then god the prosperity is going to continue and um and so there was uh this is a fun story of a certain man he was a um an immigrant in budapest hungary and um and they had a big family and so they all had to live in a one-room apartment nine of them in a one-room apartment so they were getting a bit squeezed and, and irritable, and, and they came to their rabbi, and, and they said, Rabbi, we, you know, are barely, you know, able to hold it together. You know, what, what do you counsel, you know, us to do? And the rabbi said, go and bring your goat into your house. Bring a goat into your house. And he said, did I hear you right, Rabbi? You said bring a goat into our one-bedroom apartment? And, and he said, yes, for one week and then come back and report to me. So the goat, um, they were there and the man came back a week later and he said, he said, Rabbi, I'm even more distraught than I've ever been. He said, we cannot, it's filthy, it stinks, it destroys everything. And the rabbi, you know, he touched his beard and he said, when you get home, kick the goat out. And then come and visit me in another week. And so the man came back, and he was so happy. <laughs> he said, Rabbi, he said, it's so peaceful with all nine of us there. <laughs> what happened? Right? They kicked the goat out, and then they realized that it was at least they could work together. But see, what's happening is there, there's this thing, it's, it's, it's called, it's crazy. America is, is, there's so many crazy things that happen. Now they have in America, they're called rage rooms. Rage rooms, you Google it. And they're paying here in San Diego for couples that can't get along. They go and pay some good money and they have rage rooms where they give them sledgehammers and hammers and, and they smash dishes and windows. And then they get all, sometimes they, they get passionate together because they're smashing everything. And then it's all on film. It's all on film. And, and they're paying for this in San Diego and L.A. It's going across, you know, the Western world. Now it's called Rage Rooms. And it's, let me, let me rephrase it. It's called a self-centered room is what it is. It's people who can't control their own emotions because they won't give their emotions and their heart to God. Because God will help us to put that together. We all have angry feelings. We all have, you know, uh, as, we, as we age or there's different challenges, we all have different things and we have got to learn how to hit the deck, hit our knees and pray through. I'm feeling rage right now, God. I'm frustrated right now, God. Help me, Holy Spirit. And guess what? The Holy Spirit comes with a peace that surpasses all human understanding. And it puts and it puts our heart back in shape and alignment again. But if I go and I take my wife to a rage room, <laughs> you gotta laugh. It's so pathetic. You're gonna guess what? You're gonna want to duplicate that when you get home. And you're going to start smashing dishes and everything as and so it's not. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, not a good pattern. Not a good pattern. So this Thanksgiving, let's pray for a healthy-hearted holiday. 
Let's pray for a time, you know, where we can share the love of Christ with those family and friends that we gather around and try and find the treasure of the kingdom and, and learn how to be grateful. You know, as kids come home uh, from school or grandkids, they always come home with a little turkey that they made out of construction paper. And, and uh, how many feathers does a turkey have? A mature turkey has 3,500 feathers. Isn't that amazing? Almost to the single amount. Hmm, sounds like God created it. Uh, but guess what? A 16-week um, a turkey is called, it's called a fryer. And a seventh-month turkey is called a roaster. <laughs> a roaster. So we got to laugh. I mean, they're like, they're made to be eaten, those big birds. They're made, that's a, hey, there's a nice roaster over there, right? And we bring it home. 21 pounder. Well, our president uh, is going to, he's going to pardon a, pre he's going to pardon a turkey this year, you know, and, and uh, in, in an American government, um, it's, it's really the only time that you really want to kind of take the government mandate, and that is to be thankful because it's an American holiday where that you can, you know, it mixes the church and, and, and government together and they endorse it and they say, be thankful. So, hey, that's a good, we can live up to that one, right? Be thankful. And a lot of times, you know, but Governor William Bradford in 1621, he had reason to be thankful. Uh, George Washington, 1777, they said, let's be thankful to God. Abraham Lincoln in 1863 said, let's be thankful, amen, for our country, for the freedoms and the liberty of why they came here, those pilgrims, those separatists that arrived here November 11th and in 1620, and they signed the Mayflower Compact, and they went out, and they, and they had to forge and build home, their little homes and huts in that winter, and half of them died. But they held on to their integrity and they held on to their faith and they died in hope. They came over as indentured servants. They came over as slaves for seven years. They signed a slave contract. They were indentured servants for seven years that they were owing. And so they came here and, they, and, and then all of a sudden, they, they, half of them, they buried half of their loved ones. And then, then a man, a, a Native American comes to them, Squanto, who comes, who was captured as a slave, taken over to Spain and England, learned English, became a Christian, and then came back. The Wampanoag, the Wampanoag Indians came back, and Squanto's there. And he says, how are you doing? A Native American shows up there. They're in the wilderness there in, in Massachusetts, right? Massachusetts Bay. And, uh, and they end up, they come together, a true testament to the power of God and unity. And you know what? Uh, Masoit, the, the Indian chief, converted to Christianity he converted to Christianity. They lived in the, in, the, in the Plymouth Plantation in perfect unity. It was like it was a divine time, but it was true Christianity, and they helped one another. And, and then it's sad because you get sinful men and women, predominantly men that come over, and they want to merchandise people, and they want to sell weapons, and they want to sell alcohol. And before you know it, you've got a murder on your hand. You've got crime on your hands. But we have to know that, that that first year in 1621 when they had that Thanksgiving feast and they brought deer and they celebrated and they learned how to grow corn through Squanto and they learned how to do, they celebrated life together. It was truly remarkable. And it's remarkable today. So we just need to know that, uh, that we need to learn to be grateful, grateful. There was a little boy, and um, he was given, this is a, a, a little American thing, a little boy was given a beautiful sweet orange, you know, by this man, and then the mother approved it and said, she said, son, thank the man, the nice man for giving you the orange. And the little boy, he says, he comes up to the man, and he hands him the orange, and he says, now peel it. 
there's there's a, a typical sour attitude of a person that you know is not grateful right and uh, there were two men and they were running in a field and uh, well they were walking you know in this open field and all of a sudden this bull starts they see it in the distance it starts running towards them and say well we're not we got to get out of here so they're running they're running for their lives and uh, and so the one man says to his friend stand Stan, he's out of breath. Say a prayer. Say a prayer. He says, I don't know how to pray. He says, say something. And so Stan thinks back to the, the prayer that he learned as a child from his dad around the table. And he says, oh, Lord, what, <laughs> what we are about to receive, make us truly thankful. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna get a good bump. From the bull, make, make us truly thankful. But you know something that we just have to laugh because I believe that, you know, we, God is going to preserve his bride and his church. But I believe we are going to have some, some interesting testings as we're coming into to 2024. And we got to keep our eyes on Jesus. We got to be grateful and thankful and be in church and reading our Bibles and worshiping and praising God. And he's going to hold us together until the moment that he decides that he's going to, he's going to take out his church. But, you know, we, we live, he who who endures to the end shall be saved. So you have to have endurance, and that's why we really got to keep that, thank, that gratefulness. Now, here's a reading assignment for you. Read Deuteronomy 28 on your own private reading. Words of Moses, covenant words for every nation that honors God. But in Deuteronomy 28, and we have lived that as America from our inception, you know, there's, ver there's, there's actually 68 verses in Deuteronomy 28. 68 verses. But verses 1 through 14 describes a nation that blesses God. That blesses, and we live them all. We read them right here, you and I. We live them all, 1 through 14. But guess what? The verses 15 through 68 talks about the curses that will come upon a nation that does not honor God. So it's all in Deuteronomy 28. And we want to live out those, you know, 1 through 14, amen, for the glory of God. And so, you know, the, these, these 10 men, back to our, our, our theme here in, in the scriptures, is that these 10 men are going to experience, they're all in a position of need and, they're, and they all respond in different ways. So in Luke 17, um, verses 11 and 12, it came to pass as they went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and he entered into a certain village there and met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. All right, now here's the thing about a leper colony. In a leper colony at that time, it didn't matter what nation you were from. It didn't matter if you were Jewish, if you were Gentile, Samaritan. You lived in that leper colony. You had to get the scraps of food that you had, broke down every social, economic, national barrier, racial barrier. You were all lepers together. And so we see these ten lepers, and they're out, and they're like, they're in need and um, but by the law, by the law, you could not confront, you could not actually come and touch those lepers by the law of the Old Testament. And so they, they had to say and stay on the other side of the street. They had to say, unclean, unclean, or something worse could come upon them. They could be killed. They could be taken out. So in order for them to live as a leper in the society at that time, they had to be banished from their family. So the, not only was the sickness bad, where you lose fingers and toes and, and parts of your nose and everything else, and then you, know, you die a horrible death, but it was also separation from your loved ones. You couldn't be there with your wife. You could not, and under the Jewish law, you could not be together anymore you could not be with your child anymore say goodbye to your child it was it was that strict that they had to separate so these these men are, are and jesus comes through samaria 
and he comes through, and these men are on the other side of the street, and they say, Jesus, they say, you know, have mercy upon us. And, they, and, and, they, and Jesus, he stood and he said, he, they lifted up their voice and said, Master, have mercy on us. And then verse 14, and when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And it was so that as they went, they were cleansed. Okay, so this is how we have to come as, 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 as people who are in this world. We're in this world, not of this world, but we have a sinful nature. We must be born again. We must come to a place of brokenness if we want to live any kind of quality of life. And God wants us to live an abundant life. God wants us to live in the fullness of joy. No matter what we're going through, his intention is that we would live a hundredfold in this life and, 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 and know how to live in the next life. Because if we get to know Jesus down here, we're not going to have to have crash courses when we get up there. Because what we're living down here is what the way we want to live up there. Amen. This is preparation. But if we, if we stand afar off from Jesus and we just play our own little games, just get enough fire insurance to get us into heaven, we're going to have to take crash courses in heaven because we won't know how to live there, but we'll have gone there because we believed in Jesus Christ. So now these men... Are, are crying out, and Jesus speaks a word to them. It's interesting. He doesn't come across the street. He doesn't lay hands on them. He speaks a word to them. And he says, go to the priest, and they'll confirm your healing. So they weren't healed. They were still leprous. They were missing parts of their nose, fingers, and, and they're all wrapped up, stinky, bandaged. And they said, we're going to act on it. And all ten of them together... All ten of them together, they stuck together, and they found a priest. And as they went to the door of the priest, it's like what, the, the priest is saying, We're, you're healed, I don't see anything wrong with you, your nose is fine, your fingers are fine, everything is fine. In fact, people were not saying unclean, unclean, they were, they were just saying, you're, you're dressed a little bit funny, my friends, but they're clean. So all ten of them are clean. See, this is the way it is, is that only Jesus can save us. Our friends can't save us. Our family can't save us. The church can't save us. Only Jesus can save us. And through him, we, we, he wants to make us whole. He wants us to, you know, be, be liberated, truly. But the position is, is that they all prayed together together. In verses 13 and 14, they all raise their voices together. Um, but it's, it's after this um, what, what begins to kind of separate them. Their observation is that um, they, 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 they needed Jesus, um, but now all of a sudden they're healed. Okay, I just have to kind of speed this up. They all experienced like salvation. They all experienced transformation. They all went to church. They went to the priest. They experienced the power of God. They experienced a changed life, a testimony. But after this is where it separates them. Because nine who were of the Jewish culture, they all of a sudden got all elated with joy because now I can go home. I can see my wife. I can see my children. I can kiss my, my grandchildren. I can, I can go and see my parents. I can go back to an old friend. They were so caught up in the blessings that they forgot God. They forgot the one who healed them. They were gone in the blessings. We have to see this. This is, this is them that they were, you know, they, they were... Um, and so Jesus wants us to go to church and he wants us to get healed. And, and this is what happens to us when we respond to the Lord is that, you know, it's through reading our Bibles that we're healed. It's through prayer that we're healed. 
It's through church attendance that we get healing. And we get, you know, through a conversation, we're, we're being healed. We've got to stay engaged with Jesus. We've got to stay in love with Jesus. See, that's the key is keeping your first love for Jesus. Keeping a grateful heart. Do you know that a lot of times we can pray out when we're in desperation? Our prayers can get really loud. Really loud. Help! Help me, God! I need your help! But where's our praise? Where's our praise? Is our praise as loud as our, or is our requests? And that's where this man, this other man, the tenth man, he was a foreigner. He was a Samaritan is that he, he cried out to God, and then he realized, you know what? I want to go home and see my wife too. I want to go home and see my kids. I want to go home and plant a garden. But there's something that's more important, and that is, is I need to go back, and I need to thank the Lord. I need to go back and find that, that rabbi that, that, that healed me. And so he comes back, and he's like, he's, he bows down. He, he de- bows down to Jesus' feet. He's unclean. Not only is he a Samaritan, but he, he's, he's not dressed properly. And, and he's like on Jesus' feet. See, Jesus, Jesus walks across the street for the sinner. Jesus allows the sinner because we're all come from sin and God redeems us and and separates us and cleanses us. We are able to come into the presence of God. He wants all people to come into his presence and receive healing. He doesn't exclude anybody who calls upon his name. And so we just have to take into heart what this man has experienced here. And um, and it says in verse uh, 17 and 18, And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? And were there not any found who who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And and this is where we have to see that Jesus is kind of baffled. He's kind of baffled. Where are the nine? Turn to your neighbor and tell him, where are the nine? (laughs) Where, Where are they? So he's expecting them, but they're not there. And that's where a lot of times we see people, they come to Christ and they get their sins forgiven and God restores them and gives them a sober mind and gives them back their kids. And then all of a sudden it's like, why can't you go to church? Why why can't you continue to give glory to God? But they're like, I'm saved, and, and, and now I'm into the sport, and now I'm doing this, and there's nothing wrong with sports, but I'm saying that this is a problem in America of people that have received the blessings and salvation and, 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 and demonstration of God's mercy and grace. But where are they? Where are they? They're, they're gone somewhere doing other things, and we pray for them. But God is, is, is saying to us is that he wants us to be like this man, like this man who got, he got, now listen to this, it's so powerful, and we, we can all get up and give a Holy Ghost dance if you want to here, but he says in verse 19, he said to him, arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. See, they, the nine, received healing. Healing is our children's bread. But the tenth received salvation. It's a word zozo. It means that they were made complete because the real world is the invisible world. The real world is the eternal world. This is going to pass away. This is going to pass away. But what's in our heart is eternal. That's what really matters. And God will bless the outside and give us his blessing and sanctification but if we don't keep going to Jesus and honoring Jesus, then we can, we can fall back. And God doesn't want us to fall back. And so we got to be, you know, worshipers of God. And, and when you feel your worship level kind of, you know, getting down, then, then get out the praise music. Crank up the praise music. If, if we feel our hearts are getting a little, you know, maybe, maybe we've, uh, 
You know, and it's fun. How many of you here love to eat? Come on, raise your hand. We all love to eat, and it's fun, and it's fun, and Thanksgiving is the time you eat a little bit extra. But you know, when, 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 those, uh, when the endorphins and everything and, and the heart is speeded up a little bit, you know, get up and, and walk around and, and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and, and turn on that praise music and we just get our hearts, you know, excited about Jesus and make sure that we're praising God. Now, there, there was this, uh, this atheist, her name was Harriet, and she was walking with her Christian friend and they were taking a walk in the morning and, and, and it was really nice and the sun was coming up, it was brisk and it was fall and the leaves are coming down and, and the sun and the, the glitter from the dew and it was just a beautiful morning. And so Harriet, the atheist, she says, she says, oh, this is so beautiful this is, I just, I just praise. This is so beautiful. And then the Christian said, Harriet, who are you praising? <laughs> who are you praising? She's like, oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, but who are you praising? Who made that sunrise? Who made the dew? Who made those leaves change those colors? And so it was a neat opportunity for her to tell her friend, we need to praise the Lord. It comes through Jesus. And a good scripture verse um, is Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. So as we're seeking God in his kingdom, and you're seeking God in his kingdom, that's why we're here. And, and we just want to encourage each other to be grateful and to continue to seek the kingdom first. It's when people say, you know what, I know I should do this, but I, I want to go with my friend over here, and I know I should, but you know, my friend, he's, he's, he wants me to drink with him and have, have a beer with him, and you know what, I know I shouldn't, and, but uh, my friends want me to dance over here, and you know, I know I shouldn't, but uh, and, you know, it goes on and on, is that we've got to keep our uh, keep your eye on the ball. Keep your, your, your eye on the prize, which is Jesus Christ and keeping him first and foremost in our lives and, and not falling into the plentiful adult, um, idolatry that, that is in our, in our culture. So this is how we can you know, cultivate thanksgiving is think about, think about, be thankful for your spouse. Think about where you began coming down that aisle together think about amen your kids and and what a blessing they are and and some of our kids get a little rebellious but but you know what you just you thank and you praise and you praise the lord for it and guess what you tell your kids hey be thankful you get free room and board you get free internet. You get free entertainment. You get free food, right? <laughs> that kid's got it made. But they need to be thankful, right, that, for their parents. And it's, it's all of us being thankful. And then, you know, widow, widows or widowers that be thankful that your loved one, you know, is in, is in heaven. And one day your, your loved one, you're going to be united with your loved one one day. But we just need to learn how to be thankful. And then... There are, you know, situations where people have just been in such devastation. But then, guess what? God can restore. If some people have come from really, really rough backgrounds. I was ministering to Hope. She was up on Cows Mountain, and she just got out of a rehab. And uh, she, you know, had lost her kids and everything. But now she, she received the Lord. She's gone through the rehab. She's gotten her kids back. And I got to pray with her, Hope. And, and she came from a Christian home. She comes from a Christian home. She just went astray. And I said, Hope, you know, you got to keep your eyes on Jesus now and that you, you, you're getting it all back. And she says, it's hard. It's hard. I want to go back. I said, Hope, you know, you got you to gotta get now that, 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 that vision that, that Jesus is there for you and you gotta, you got to keep going after Jesus. You keep going to that church you're going to. Hope. Keep going. And, she, and I encouraged her that you've got a beautiful future and a beautiful hope. Isn't that neat? Her name's Hope. But we've got to put our hope in the Lord. And, uh, and, and a part of that is, is just staying faith, faithful to God. 
And uh, like this, this Samaritan, he, he came back, but he got, he got to go back to his family. He got to see his wife. He got to see his mom and dad if they were still alive. He got to experience all those things. But he put Jesus first. So now he, does, he not only comes back whole, physically whole, he comes back spiritually whole. He comes back as a king and a priest, and he's able to minister to his family. And, uh, and that, that would be the position that God would want us to be in. So let's all stand up together and, and wonderful listeners and thankful people. We're all thankful together. Had some fun and just got some perspective here. So as we all stand up together, I'm going to say a prayer um, just of gratitude and, um, and perspective. How many of us here want perspective and we want Jesus first? We want Jesus first, amen. And I know that's, that's all of us here. So, Lord Jesus, as we have uh, presented the word of God and we're just in awe of this, this, this foreigner, this Samaritan God that, that came from such devastation, but he, he, ate, he had the gravity, he had the humility, he knew that, that it wasn't just a physical healing alone that he needed. He needed spiritual development he needed he needed jesus he needed relationship with you god and we're just so inspired by him lord and we just thank you for changing us lord as spiritual people and healing our bodies healing our minds and and blessing our families god and we do pray lord that this would be a season lord where some lost children could come back to jesus or grandchildren lord or lord just neighbors and friends lord god i just thank you god for using us to be alert and alive and joyful and and uh and just uh, uh, lord just receiving the blessings lord as we come into this holiday season and we thank you now for anointing the word anointing this sunday and what remains in jesus name amen amen praise the lord and if um if you need special prayer i want to pray with you you know here at the altar but let's uh, close with the lord's prayer together and this is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And what's Philippians 4.13? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's just say it humbly to our heart. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Our, our king said it so we can do it. God bless you. Just a couple of reminders is that